Hello, Science Hill. This is Mr. Goins, one of your school counselors. It is time for registration again. Time for you guys to pick the classes that you guys want to take next semester. Now, due to COVID, instead of having you guys come into our offices one by one and us working through the packet and everything together, um, the staff is going to put together a series of videos on different topics to help guide you along throughout this kind of registration process. So with that being said, I'm your first video and we're going to talk about the graduation packet. So when it comes to the graduation packet, there are going to be a few things, a few pieces of paper inside that that we want to take a look at. So the very first one I'm going to pull up on the screen for you guys, and it is going to look like this. It is the portal guide. It's going to show you guys how to get into the gradebook portal and how to get into the areas where you need to get to sign up for your classes. There's going to be a more detailed video about this, and so I'm just going to skim through this really quickly. If you guys need to pause this at any time to look at anything, feel free, but we will move on after that. So the second thing I want you guys to look at is your transcript. This transcript has just a copy of one of the students here. On the left side, you are going to have your classes. In the middle, you're going to have your grades. And then on the far right side here, you're going to have, if you've taken the ACT or SAT, those results, things like that. And again, there's going to be another video um, going into this transcript in much further detail. And so again, I'm just going to skim through this real quick, and then we will move on to the next piece of paper. Now, the third piece of paper that I want you guys to look at, and probably the most important for my video, is this graduation plan. So this is a sample of a graduation plan where a counselor has went through and checked off the courses that you guys need to graduate. Um, and down at the bottom here, this is the most important part. Down at the bottom, I'm going to zoom in if I can. There we go. Right here is the recommendations that we as counselors have wrote in for you guys to take next semester. We take a look at the credits you already have. We take that and we compare that to the graduation requirements at Science Seal. And this is what we recommend. And so looking at that, you'll be able to get a good idea of what we think you need to take next semester. Now, with that being said, once you've seen your transcript, once you've seen these recommendations, then we can start looking at what is going to be offered in the summer and in the fall of next year so we can kind of get this plan together. And so the next thing you guys are going to look at is this piece of paper, which is your online registration form for the summer courses. Now, one good thing that came out of COVID is uh, all these classes are going to be free to you guys again. And so make sure that you read the center here talking about some restrictions that we have. And then on down here at the bottom, here are the courses that we're going to offer over the summer. And if you wish to sign up for those, you can do that. And last but not least, the last part of your packet is going to be this course list. Now, the course list is going to be different based on the grade that you are in. Not every person can take every single class, right? That would be too much. And so we have a sample of a 10th grade course list for you here. And then once you see what we recommend, you can go here, figure out those classes that you need if you want to do, you know, if we say English 3, you know, that could be regular English 3, that could be English 3 Honors, that could be AP English. There's some different options for you guys. And then when we write elective in there, you guys can go through this and kind of figure out what your interests are and where you want to take those electives. Now, with that being said, this is the end of my last video, but there is one more thing that we need to talk about, and that is some very, very important dates. So with that being said, the portal for you guys to register for your classes is going to open on March or sorry, February 23rd, and then it will close on March 5th. So again, the portal will open for you guys on February 23rd and close on March 5th. I hope you guys have a good one. And if you guys have any questions, please let us know. Thanks. Hey everyone, this is Josh Jarnigan with the Science Hill Counseling Department. Welcome to this second video on the registration process for signing up for classes for next year. The first thing that I want to make sure that I stress to you is that you contact us with any questions that you may have. I know this can be a very confusing process, so go to the Science Hill website, click on Counselors, and you'll find our website and our uh, email addresses if you do have any questions where, where we can help you. The biggest thing I want to stress right now is just making sure that you meet those deadlines. If you would like input on what classes you're going to take next year, you need to make sure that you follow all the directions and get your classes signed up in your online portal by March the 5th. So make sure that you do that and we'll go over that process in other videos. Um, take a look at the paperwork that you have and I want to take just a minute and go over your transcript. Um, the transcript is so important because that's what colleges are going to see. 
whenever you apply to college at the beginning of your senior year. Yes, you apply to college at the very beginning of your senior year. They're going to take a look at that transcript and they're going to look at the grades from 9, 10, and 11th grade and make their decisions if they're going to let you in or not. A lot of times colleges have to make their decisions on you before senior year grades have even come in. So those 9th, 10th, and 11th grade grades are so important and we want to make sure that we get you started in the right foot. Um, in order to get your Science Hill Diploma, you do have to earn 28 credits. It can't be just any 28. The state is very particular what classes you have to have, and we'll talk more about that in a future videos. But for right now, here are the classes that you do have to have in order to get that Science Hill Diploma. Um, you also, in accord, addition to these, you also, if you want to start at a four-year college, you have to have two world language credits and one fine art credit. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit, uh, but it has to be two credits of the same language, so Spanish 1, Spanish 2. It can't be French 1 and Spanish 1. Um, you also have to have a focus area. A lot of our students really stress about the focus area, but you don't need to. A focus is just three classes that are similar. Um, so one focus area is three classes that are similar. ROTC, AP, band, chorus, orchestra, any of our CTE programs, STEM, uh, humanities, all can be focus areas. So don't, don't stress about the focus area. Those are pretty easy to earn. And that's where you take those electives because you are also going to have to take six electives in order to uh, reach that 28 credits to get your Science Hill Diploma. Okay, so uh, take a look at that transcript. Let me get to that. Let me get to that page where my transcripts are. There we are. And first, look over your transcript. Make sure it's correct. If you've taken a class over, make sure that the the old grade has disappeared and the new grade is on. So, because uh, a lot of times with 2,300 students here, that uh, we miss that sometimes. So just take a look and make sure that all of your grades are correct. Um, whenever you've taken the ACT, your highest ACT score should, will appear over here on the right. So if you haven't taken the ACT yet, those will be blank. The classes that you're currently enrolled in will be down here at the bottom. So whenever you start sending this to colleges, they're going to see what kind of classes you signed up for. And down here at the bottom of the page, you're going to uh, see two different GPAs. We have the weighted GPA and your unweighted GPA. Your unweighted GPA is the HOPE Scholarship GPA. This is the GPA that the state looks at, and if it is 3.0 or higher whenever you graduate, you qualify for the HOPE Scholarship, which can be worth up to $16,000 whenever you graduate. The weighted GPA, uh, if you have questions about how we calculate that, um, come see your counselor or you can uh, reach out to us and we'll help you with that. But the weighted GPA is typically going to be higher if you've taken honors or AP classes or any kind of SDC classes here as well. So make sure that you take a look at that. And if you have any questions about that, let me know. Uh, the last thing I want to share with you are some new classes and some new offerings that we're going to have uh, starting next school year. Uh, we have an AP Computer Science Principles class that's going to be offered for the first time next year. You do have to have Algebra 1 credit in order to qualify for that. So if even if you're a ninth grade student and you took Algebra 1 in the eighth grade, you would be able to sign up for that. Uh, we also are going to start offering uh, an education cluster at the CTE class. If you're interested in education as a career, uh, you may want to check that out. Um, and we're also offering two different uh, construction uh, paths now. We have a new starting this year. Uh, we still have the carpentry one and two path that you can take and also a new one is uh, a plumbing hvac and uh, electrical uh, program that we're going to be offering as well um, so you can look into that african-american history we offered that this school year but uh, we didn't offer it in time to get it on the sheet uh, so we do have it on your registration sheet now so you can sign up for that if you're interested and uh, We'll talk more about dual enrollment here in just a little bit, but if you take dual enrollment English for your senior year, um, that will be offered here on campus through ETSU, um, just like uh, Mr. Brown's stats class has historically been offered. Uh, maintenance Light Repair 4 will also be offered this year. It's not new, but uh, 
we don't we're not able to offer that every year but we will be offering it this year we did have to drop Dig digital arts three and the american sign language and the dual enrollment german offerings so that's what we have as far as new classes dropped classes and uh your transcripts so make sure you take a look at all that stuff and reach out to us if you have any questions please let us know have a great day Hi guys, this is Miss English. I'm your school counselor at Science Hill High School. I'm going to cover the English, math, and science portion for registration for next year. So for English, let's start there. For English 1 and 2, your options are English 1, CP, that's college prep, or English 1 and 2 honors. So those are your options that you can choose. When you become a junior, you have a few more options. If you decide that you want to do the AP seminar and research path, your junior year, you're going to pair AP seminar with English three year long or AP English Lang year long. When you're looking at PowerSchool to actually sign up for this class, the AP seminar and the English three year long or the AP Lang year long will have a YR next to the class whenever you choose it. So make sure you choose the one with the YR because it's going to be a year long class. So you do have that option. If you choose to do the AP seminar your junior year, when you're a senior, you do have the options to take AP research. So as long as you do an English three version plus your AP seminar your junior year, AP research your senior year will count as your English four. Another option for your senior year English is you can take English four CP. You can also take in, um, AP Lit and Lang. OK, so those are your different options for your English four. We're going to move on to the math portion. So for math, the traditional math class and making sure that you have graduation requirements met is you have to have Algebra 1B, you have to have Geometry, you have to have Algebra 2, plus one more math credit your senior year. So at Science Hill, you have to have a math class. You have to attempt a math class every single year that you're at Science Hill. The traditional path for that looks like Algebra 1A and Algebra 1B your freshman year, usually geometry your sophomore, Algebra 2 your or junior year, and then whatever math of your choice your senior year. That can look like a lot of different options, and you'll have to talk to your counselors more specifically for which math that you feel like you need. That's the traditional math path for graduation requirements and to make sure that you're on track. We do offer AP Computer Science. We've had AP Computer Science this past year. If you're going to take that as a fourth math, it's going to go in the same order as your traditional math path. So Algebra 1A, Algebra 1B, Geometry, Algebra 2, and then your senior year, you can take your AP Computer Science. That'll count as your fourth math. You can also take it at any other point in time as long as it, as you know, it counts as a math elective. We will offer a new AP Computer Science Principles class starting next year. AP Computer Science Principles is lower than the AP Computer Science class, but they're not sequential. You can take it after you've taken Algebra 1 in any order that you'd like to. So as long as you have Algebra 1 as your prereq, you can take AP Computer Science Principles as a math class that we're offering new next year. For science, the traditional science path is do, usually doing biology, physical science, and then chemistry or physics. That's a very traditional math path. For graduation requirements, you just need three sciences total. And you have to have biology, and you have to have either chemistry or physics. So again, the traditional path, a very normal path that most of our students take is going to be bio, physical science, and then chemistry or physics after that. There are different versions and different circumstances that you may take a different science path. Um, if you need to do that path, your counselor will talk with you specifically, or you can talk with your counselor too if you have any questions about that. But that is the, the traditional path that we have. And then of course, we do have higher level science classes still offered next year. They wouldn't be new this year because we've had them. But Bio 2 Honors is going to be the prereq to go into AP Bio. Chem 2 Honors is going to be the prereq to go into AP Chem. And we do prefer that you take those in the same year. So Bio 2 Honors in the fall, AP Bio in the spring, Chem 2 Honors in the fall, AP Chem in the spring. That's traditionally what we would suggest whenever you're planning out your classes and you want to go to a higher level science, if that's your choice, um, we, would, we would suggest that you take those in the fall and the spring and pair them together. But remember, for your graduation requirements, you have to have four Englishes, you have to have four math credits, and you have to have three science credits. And among those different subsections will be different ones that are required specifically that you have to have. If you have any questions, please come see your counselor, come find us, um, ask us anything, send us an email, whatever you need to do.
I hope you have a great day. Hey everybody, it's Miss Thompson here and I'm gonna discuss social studies, PE, ROTC, and your application courses. So in social studies, you need to have three credits for graduation. Those include world history and geography, SDC, US history, and economics and government. Now, there's a couple substitutions um, with these classes, so let me go um, over those. So for world history and geography, your substitute, uh, substitutions for these classes can be AP Human Geography, AP World History, which is only offered to 10th through 12th graders, and AP European History. For SDC US History, you can also opt to take AP US History. And then for Economics and Government, you can opt to take AP Micro and Macro Economics, um, and you can take AP Government. So for PE, you need one and a half credits for graduation. One of those credits is in wellness and the other credit is in personal or half a credit is in personal finance. There are several different ways you can get um, these are your half a credit of personal fitness. One is by taking actually taking personal fitness. One is by pairing it with uh, and another one would be by pairing it with uh, driver's ed. Another way is taking ROTC. And the last way you can get it is through a sports waiver. Now to get it through your sports waiver, you must play a sport or play in the band. Your coach or your teacher must sign a form and you can get that, that form from our website or come ask one of your counselors. Continuing on with PE, um, I need you to keep in mind that if you would like to take weights, you must have taken lifetime wellness first. When you register for it, you need to also pick fall or spring if you are in a sport. And if you are not in a sport or don't care, just leave it blank. Um, students that plan on taking driver's ed will need to fill out a driver's ed form requesting this course along with selecting um, the selection during registration. You need to also remember that you need to pair driver's ed with that nine week class PE class. Okay, so moving on to ROTC. When you go to select ROTC and you're selecting it for the first time, you need to make sure that you're selecting JROTC. Returning students to the program just need to select the ROTC. Now, um, ROTC um, actually covers a bunch of credits. Um, so let me go over that really quickly with you. If you take JR, or I'm sorry, take ROTC for three years up to um, for three years, it can count as your focus area, it can count for wellness and fitness, and it can also count for your finance and government. So how this works is if you take it for two semesters, it will count for wellness and fitness. If you take it for one additional semester, it will count for your finance and your government. And the three additional semesters will count as your focus area. Lastly, but not leastly, let's go over the application courses. When you are registering for the and want to participate in these application courses, um, you will need to register for these classes as your alternative class. Please keep in mind, just because you fill out the form, you may not be selected for the class. So those application courses include Student Worker, Peer Tutor, Hillside Cafe, The Watagan, AP Studio Art, uh, Topper Summit, Work-Based Learning, and Your Service Learning. Okay, that concludes my portion of this video. Hey, I want to talk to you a bit about registration today, uh, specifically world language, art, and CTE. Um, one of the misconceptions about world language and art is that they are required for graduation. They are not required for graduation. They are required for admission to most four-year colleges, and that's where that misconception occurs. So if four-year college is in your plan, then... Uh, Foreign language uh, and art are uh, essential for you. We have three uh, different languages, Spanish, French, and Latin. We also have heritage Spanish for native speakers. Uh, you might check, out, check that out. Um, you have to do two credits in the same language to meet that four-year college admission requirement. Uh, and then for art, we've got band, chorus, orchestra, theater, visual art, and... Um, in ceramics. So 
one of those meets that form meets that uh, college admission requirement. But again, they're not required for graduation; only admission to four-year colleges. Now, if you choose not to take world language and art, you do have to sign a waiver. Have a fam- have parents or guardians sign a waiver. So talk to your counselor about that. Okay, what about CTE? We have about twelve different CTE programs. Uh, all kinds of things from from welding to auto to plumbing, um, culinary, criminal justice, computer, medical, human studies, plant science. Uh, I know I'm probably for architectural engineering design, AV production. We've got business and marketing. Got 12 of them over there. Uh, and, and some new ones this year for the first time. We've got heating and air conditioning as a part of that construction cluster and plumbing as a part of that construction as well. Um, And there's one now that's teaching as a profession. Um, CTE courses for the most part are very hands-on. So it's a different kind of learning than your, you know, your English or your math or something like that. So if you really like hands-on learning, CTE might be something that you uh, would be interested in. Uh, CTE is a great opportunity to explore different career options. You know, I would imagine that many of you don't know what you want to do with the rest of your life in terms of a career. So, you know, exploring a CTE course or two to see if you like it, that's terrific. And even if you don't like it, that's good information too. Like, okay, I know I don't want to be a welder or I know I don't want to be a cosmetologist. You know, that helps narrow down that that search process of of careers for you. Um, Your CTE courses, many of them are... um, have industry certifications, which can be a benefit as you move into the workforce, and they can lead you to a skilled trade um, that requires a lot less education after high school. So conceivably, you know, you could take some CTE courses, find something that you like, go to TCAT in Elizabethan or Northeast State, spend a year over there, maybe two, uh, maybe you're 19 or 20 years old, you're finished with your education and you get out with a job that'll make you $25, $25 an hour, maybe $50,000 a year as a welder or an auto mechanic or police officer or whatever. Uh, you know, so CTE is a quick way into the workforce. Um, one more thing about CTE classes is that they have, uh, some of them have clinical experiences, particularly your medical uh, and your work-based learning where you can be out in the workforce, uh, job shadowing, or maybe even working. Um, I know your topper, your uh, your human studies also uh, has an opportunity to work with topper tots. So CTE is a great option for you to uh, investigate different career plans and and uh, explore a little bit. So check out your CTE courses. That's a good option for you. Thanks. Hey, Science Hill. It's Miss Reeves. We are now going to talk about dual enrollment. What is dual enrollment? It is the opportunity for students to take college classes and get college credit and high school credit. Students normally take those beginning level classes like English 1010 and 1020 or Comp 1 and Comp 2 as they're probably more commonly known and dual enrollment stats, which the technical name is probability and statistics It's Math 1530. Those are the classes our students most often take. Um, There may be some who take additional electives at ETSU, um, things like uh, health profession exploration, computer science. Um, We've even had some students do PE classes like marksmanship and scuba. So there are lots of classes to pick from. This year, uh, which would be the 21-22 school year, the English 1010 and 1020 and the province stats will be taught on our Science Hill campus. Ms. Stiltner will be teaching the English classes and Mr. Brown will teach the province stats class. Any other electives or um, say science classes Uh, additional math classes, those dual enrollment classes will be taught on the ETSU campus by ETSU instructors. There is a dual enrollment grant that will pay for the first two classes. Students who choose to take additional dual enrollment classes will have some financial obligation. It's a discounted rate, um, but students can do that provided that they maintain a 3.0 college GPA. 
requirements to do dual enrollment classes. Uh, students must be a junior or senior. They must have a 3.0 GPA, that's a Science Hill unweighted GPA, and an ACT score of 19. Students who don't have an ACT score yet, or maybe who don't have a 19 on the ACT, can take the AccuPlacer, which is a test that ETSU administers. If students score high enough on the AccuPlacer, then they can take dual enrollment. Now, for students who are using the AccuPlacer for dual enrollment, they will not be admitted to ETSU until that score is in place and submitted. So that might slow things down a little bit. Um, students can take dual enrollment in the fall or in the spring of their junior or senior year. If they are waiting for scores to come back or maybe don't necessarily want to take dual enrollment in the fall of their junior year, then they can wait until the spring. The same thing goes for the senior year. So how does dual enrollment work? Here is the process. We have a dual enrollment packet um, that students need to pick up. So they would get that from their counselor. The first thing students do is apply to ETSU. That is online. There used to be a $25 fee. That fee has been waived for dual enrollment students. So um, all the, the website, the web address is all in that packet, that dual enrollment packet. But students will apply to ETSU online. They will complete their dual enrollment grant online. And that's through the TSAC portal, Tennessee Student Assistance Corporation. Uh, that's through their portal, and that website web address is also in the packet. Once they have applied to ETSU online and completed the dual enrollment grant, they will meet with their counselor to decide which classes they want to take. Um, the counselors will show them how to search for classes online through ETSU Gold Link. Once they know the class they want to take, students will complete that authorization form. That is the first form of the packet. On that form, there is a place to list the actual class and section number. It is not enough for students to simply write, um, I'm trying to think of a class that would just be offered at ETSU and not with us. Let's use the health profession exploration. It's not enough to just write health profession exploration. Students have to write the actual course number and the section number. Students also have to write the day and time that class is offered. Is it offered Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 8 to 8.50 or is it offered Tuesday, Thursday from 1 to 2.30? Classes for dual enrollment have to fit within the Science Hill bell schedule. So students can't say, oh, I'm taking this class at ETSU and it runs over a little bit, so I'll be a little late to my third period class. That doesn't work. It has to fit within our bell schedule. That's why it's good for students to meet with their counselor about which actual class they want to take. Um, on that authorization form, there's also a place for parents to sign, and there's a place the counselor has to sign verifying the GPA. So once the students have applied to ETSU online, they have completed that authorization form and given it to their counselor, the counselor will then submit that form with the student's transcript to the folks at ETSU. After that, it's usually pretty quick for them to admit the students, especially if they already have a 19 on the ACT. If they're waiting on an AccuPlacer test, that might take a little bit longer. Once students are admitted to ETSU, they will get an email or a letter in the mail that explains what their next steps are. Students will then go into Goldlink themselves and register for the class. Once that is done, the students need to go into their gold link and find the link that says concise student schedule. They need to print that schedule and submit it to their counselor. Only then will their Science Hill schedule have their dual enrollment class on it. The deadline for that is May the 1st, if you are thinking of taking a dual enrollment fall 21, and then it's December the 1st if you are waiting until spring to do your dual enrollment. Um, when you register for your classes, there is going to be a dual enrollment holder 
that you can sign up for. If you know you plan to do, say you're a junior in your senior year, you know you want to do Comp 1 and Comp 2 in dual enrollment stats, you can put in a placeholder, basically, that just says dual enrollment holder as three of your eight spots. But that dual enrollment holder is only good until May the 1st or December the 1st. After that, you're pulled out of dual enrollment and put in a Science Hill class. So it's imperative that students get that they have to submit that concise student schedule. Because once we know the class you're taking and when you're taking it, we can put it in your Science Hill schedule. If you have any questions about dual enrollment, please ask your counselor. It is not a hard process, but there are specific steps you have to take. And we are here to help you complete the authorization form. We'll help you complete the grant if you need it. We'll help you apply to ETSU if you need it. Um, just make sure you ask us if you have any questions. Thank you.